Hey everyone, welcome to the Oaklords YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we're gonna be making a super quick, super easy, great back to school, end of summer, back to reality, back to work project. Today, we are making the Smith, and this pattern comes to us from Sally Tomato Patterns. Now, this pattern is fantastic, but I need to tell you, the material we're using for this pattern today comes to us from the Sally Tomato Oakaroos monthly mystery box, and this is one of two projects in the box. So today we're gonna go over the first project, and then at the end of this I'll show you what the next project will be, and that will be in a week from today. So if you're already into August, then both videos should already be out, but today's video is gonna be over the Smith, and this is so beginner friendly, especially if you're just starting working with faux leather, vinyl, cork. Those are the materials you're gonna wanna use today. No quilt cotton today just raw edge materials. So you can see this is what it looks like. It's a very neutral, neutral version of it. I have a little bit more of a wild one I'll show you in just a moment, but I wanted to show you a neutral version. It's very simple. It has a strap on the front. We open up the strap and you see on the back of the flap we have a zipper pocket and then you can see in the center we have a space for a notebook and this has an elastic band to help hold that notebook in place. And then on the back pocket, on the other side, we have multiple pockets here. We have two card slot pockets, two small slip pockets, and then this little strap thing here, which you can put cords in there, like charging cords. You can hang your pens. So it has a lot of little pockets to help hold everything together. Now, what I think this is great for, I don't have a planner this size, but if you had one of those, like, you know, those monthly or weekly spiral notebook planners, that's what goes right here in the center. You put that in the center and then you keep all your pens and all your little business cards and all your necessities over here. Keep this with you, school starting, college starting, you know, maybe you took a longer vacation over the summer, you gotta go back to work. And it's kind of like, I know that August isn't the beginning of the year, January is technically the beginning of the year, but a lot of us, like even our calendars start in August because that's kind of like, the beginning of the year, right? It's like end of summer, back to reality. So this is a great little project to make for yourself or to gift to someone else to kind of like get them back into, because not all of us want summer to end, right? Not all of, us, all of us wanted to keep going, but we gotta get back to work, back to reality, get excited about fall and all the things that come with it. This is a great project for yourself, like I said, or for somebody in your life who could use it. So thank you as always to Sally Tomato for not only sponsoring today's video, but also for allowing me to use your patterns on my channel. Sally Tomato patterns are really thought of and written for beginner sewers. So whether you're just beginning sewing a zipper or you're just beginning working with faux leather cork, they really hold your hand through all of it and they make sure their patterns are accessible to every skill level. This is a very simple pattern. The way I'm gonna show you to make it is very beginner friendly. However, you can take this up a notch and make it very, very professional. You can add some stabilizer to this to make it very firm. You can edge coat the sides. I did that on another one. I'm gonna show you in just a moment. That is the beauty of Sally Tomato patterns, that the, every skill set can make it. Whatever you're comfortable with, you can make it, and it's gonna turn out beautiful. If you're new to the Oakley's YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, anything at all, leave them down in the comments section. If you wanna be notified every time we have a new video out or when we go live, once a month we do try to go live, you're gonna to wanna to hit that little notification bell, it's like a little bell looking thing, hit that, and that will make sure you get notified either by email or on your app, on your phone, on your tablet, whenever a new video comes out or when we're live. So let me show you the first version of this that I made when I was testing out this pattern. This vinyl is a little bit stiffer. Uh, the exterior and the interior vinyl are both a little bit thicker. So this would be one of those, you know, if you're comfortable working with thicker material, this is going to work out well for you. You can see this is how it looks. I love it. I just, I absolutely adore it. Also on this one, I did edge coat and I'm going to show you. You can see those raw edges there. You don't, you don't, you don't see the raw edges because they're coated with a paint. Now the edge coating I like to use, it comes from Mojo Sews. It's beautiful, the lots of colors, lots of beautiful paints. So if you wanna learn more about edge coating, I'll have a video down below that I did recently where we really went into detail on how to edge coat. It provides a beautifully professional finish. I mean, really professional finish. And honestly, it does not take much extra work at all. So if you're interested in doing that, I do highly suggest you give it a go. You can definitely also use it with the materials from this box today. Again, this is more of like a neutral, everyday, kind of a good one for anybody. And this one is like, you have a friend who loves this stuff. So that's why you picked this vinyl. All right, guys, let's get started. So for this pattern, you're going to need about a third of a yard of main fabric and a half a yard of contrast fabric. So pretty much the main fabric is the outside of the material and the contrast fabric is the inside of the pouch. 
You can get real scrappy, especially with the inside pieces. As you can see, we have a lot of different cuts here, so you can use a lot of different scraps of things. I would not suggest any sort of quilt cotton. I think everything needs to be some sort of material that can be left raw edges. So like cork, faux leather, vinyl, things like that. You're also gonna need some foam interfacing. So about a quarter yard of that, and then a little bit of fold over elastic. This is the one I like to use. I usually buy mine from By Annie. And you're gonna need about a half a yard of your fold over elastic. And then you're going to need a zipper. I like to use a number five zipper. And this needs to be at least 11 inches long. So here's a bunch of the other stuff. You're gonna need a good amount of clips to hold everything in place. I also like to use this paper tape. It's really helpful to keep those pockets down before we sew them. The thread I'm using today is a Tex 35 weight thread and it is a variegated thread. It has different colors of pink and red on there. And then the bobbin thread I'm using is a Guterman thread. I would suggest you have a bobbin thread that matches your material because you will see it in the end. I also have some quarter inch double-sided tape. The needle I'm using is a Microtex 8012. Then as always, I have a little bag tag with my brand name on it. I have a stiletto to help hold everything in place by the machine. And then I also have a stiletto seam ripper combo over here, a one inch by six inch ruler. I like to always have three marking pens, a chalk marking pen, an air racing marking pen, and then like a silver ink pen and then a lighter to clean up any little loose ends. So let's go through our pattern pieces, starting with piece A. Piece A is a very large cut here, and as you can see in the end, it's just pretty much gonna fold over itself like this. So if you have any heat transfer vinyl or embroidery, or if you wanna applique something on here, start thinking about that. We'll get placement for where everything goes as we work, but you do wanna think about if you have a design somewhere where you wanna put it. I will probably put my bag tag on the exterior, but I'm not quite sure where I wanna put it yet. So I'm just gonna leave this for now. Next, you're gonna have two cuts of piece B. These are both gonna be to make the tablet pocket. This is the nice little slip pocket that goes over on the right side. Piece C is going to be for the zipper pocket. And piece D is going to be the strap closer. This is gonna be the strap you see on the exterior. So if you want something that's really vibrant and really pops, think about that. And then finally, we have pieces E, F, G, and H. Piece E is the accessory holders. This is those little loops that go on the top of the tablet pocket. Piece F is a slip pocket. Piece G, you're gonna have two cuts of this, and this is gonna be using the template. This is for the little card slot pockets, and then piece H, also two cuts, and this is also for the card slots. So now grab piece C and flip it upside down, and on the bottom, you're going to mark one inch up from the edge, and then draw a horizontal line, and then draw a second horizontal line, half of an inch above that, and then two little vertical lines connecting them on the sides, each one inch in. This should give you a nice little rectangle right in the center of the bottom of your panel. And now you wanna grab some scissors and carefully cut out that rectangle without going past any of the lines. So this might be easier with scissors or an X-Acto knife. Just be careful as you cut out this inner pocket. Once you have that rectangle cut out, flip this so that it's right side up and then grab your zipper. And I'm just gonna add some double-sided tape along the top and bottom edges of my zipper tape right along those outer edges, not too close to the teeth. Okay, so now take your zipper and when your zipper closes, it should be going towards the right and lay it right side up. And then take your C panel and laying it right side up, just cover the zipper tape just like that. And you can see my zipper tape is a lot longer than it needs to be. I like to work with it that way and then I just trim it down later. So once I have it positioned where I want it, I'm gonna lift up one edge and remove the paper from my double-sided tape. And then once that is nice and sticky, just on one side, I'm going to center my rectangle over my teeth. Once I'm happy with it, I'll just push this down. Make sure you move the zipper pull into the center as well. There we go. Once one side is stuck down, you can remove the paper from the other side and then just gently flip this back over and tape it down. There we go, now let's take this to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch along all four edges just outside of this rectangle at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, now we have that stitched in place. I'm just gonna trim down my zipper just a little bit. I'm just gonna trim it down so it's not right against the edge of my vinyl. Just like that, I'm not measuring it. <laughs> I just don't want it to be too, too close to the vinyl because I don't want it in the raw edge. And you can see we don't have a lining for this. So that's something that, uh, that's personal preference, but we do not have any sort of lining for this today. You can use quilt cotton and attach your own small lining here. I'm not gonna show you how to do that. We've done that in some other patterns, but that's why the material we're using today is all good on the backside, good on the edges. It's all raw edge good. <laughs> so we just don't need the lining for this. However, if you want, you can get creative and attach your own lining here. Okay, now take this pocket and lay it wrong side up zipper on the bottom. So let's rotate this zipper on the bottom, 
wrong side up, just like this. And we're gonna measure half of an inch on the top edge here in from the right, and then half of an inch over here towards the left. So half of an inch in on both sides. Then you're gonna grab your ruler and you're gonna mark a line that goes from that half of an inch mark all the way to the bottom corner. So on this side, it'll go from that half inch down to the bottom left corner. On this side, it's gonna go from that half inch down to the bottom right corner. All right, once you have those little diagonal lines marked, you can use your rotary cutter and your ruler to cut it, or you can use your scissors. Sometimes I get a little worried that with the rotary cutter, I'm gonna lose control and then I'm just gonna, you know, completely miscut this. So I'm gonna use my scissors here. All right, once you have that C panel trimmed down, you can set this to the side and now grab your A panel. And one thing to think about if you have a directional print or anything like that, you've already cut this out, so too late. But the way this is gonna end up in the end is like this. Bottom's gonna fold up, top is gonna fold down just like that. The top here is what we're gonna narrow. Just like we did on C panel, we're gonna narrow it down a little bit over here. So think about that when you're cutting out your material. For this month, you know, kit, we're not using any sort of directional print, but in my first one we did, and so that was something I had to consider. So we're gonna flip this wrong side up, looking at the top edge, and once again, we're gonna mark in half of an inch along the short top edge, along this top, just from the left and from the right. And then once you have those half inch marks done, measure down seven inches. So seven inches on the left and seven inches on the right and make a little mark there and then use your ruler to connect those two marks, the half inch and the seven inch mark, just like that. Again, we're just getting these nice little diagonals here. And just like before, I'm gonna use my scissors to cut along those lines. All right, there we go. And it's a very slight little curve, but it does help a lot with tucking it into that strap in the end. Okay, so looking at piece A and then also grab your piece C and we're gonna look at the diagonal corners that we cut. We just wanna round them off. We don't want these like, I mean, you can leave them like this, honestly. You don't have to round them off, but it looks really nice when you round them off. We're only rounding off these corners. We're not rounding off the other end over here. We're not, we're gonna leave that as a sharp 90 degree angle. So I'm just gonna grab my bobbin thread spool and I'm just gonna line that up with the corner on the top. And then you see, I just kind of line it up so that the, Spool has an edge on the top and the left side, and then I just trace it. If you have one of our little handy dandy rounded corner tools, uh, I use this on the other one and I use the one inch corner. So for this, I would just line this up with the top edge. Again, the, the rounded edge is lining up with the flat edges. And then I would just trace it like that. So whichever way, use what you have. Now, once you have those little rounded bits marked, grab your scissors and just carefully cut around those corners. All right, so if you have a design, the pattern tells you where you can place it. This is a flap, so this is the one I've already made. Uh, I just wanted to do a little prep step here if you really want the edge coating on the inside of this as well. So you can see I used edge coating on the exterior only along these outer edges, but we do still have a lot of raw edges on the inside. So if you wanna edge coat, now's the time to do it. The places you can edge coat, which I would suggest would be right at the top of the C panel. So this is not an open bit here, but it is a raw edge, so if you want to edge coat that, you can. You can edge coat the top of your slip pocket and the tops of your card slot pockets. I would wait a minute before you edge coat this edge here until we put it all together. So now grab pieces F, G, and H, and along the top edge of all these pieces, we're going to just top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, and I do suggest you back stitch at the beginning and the end of each top stitching. Okay, now with piece F facing right side up, we're gonna measure in one inch from each edge. And so I'm using my silver ink pen because I can just wipe that off. So I just mark these little ticks that are one inch in from each edge and they're about half of an inch down. And then on the back side of your two piece G's, put a little bit of double-sided tape just on the bottom. And now we're gonna match this up. So we're gonna place this right side up so that it is half of an inch down from the top edge and one inch in from the side edge. And I really should have used different pieces of material here so you can see it better. I do apologize. I did not think about that. But I'm gonna make sure that my left little top edge here is gonna be one inch in from the left edge and then this is just gonna line up, the top edge is gonna line up with the, my ruler so that it's half of an inch down from the bottom. Once I have that in place, I'm just gonna push down on the tape on the bottom just like that. This is also where I like to grab some more paper tape because that's just a tiny bit of double-sided tape and I really don't want this moving around, so I'm gonna add a little bit more tape here. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, except this time the other pocket is gonna be one inch from the right and again, half of an inch down from the bottom. All right, once I have that in place, I'm gonna use some more sticky tape. 
just double check this. All right, once these are where you want them, we're gonna just stitch right along the bottom edge here. So these little pieces that are taped down on the bottom, we're just gonna stitch right over it at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end each time. Once those are stitched in place, I'm gonna take the tape off, but I'm just gonna actually move it to the top because I won't be stitching over the top but I don't want these moving around. Now grab your two piece H's and on the bottom edge, on the back side, add a little bit of double sided tape to those. And we're just gonna lay these over our other card slot pockets. And what I like to do, I like the top stitching. So the little top stitching line here I have on piece H, I like that to match up right along this little notched edge. So it does overhang it a little bit. Per the pattern, you're pretty much supposed to just line up the top edge of your H piece with those little bottom edges of the notches. But I don't, I, when I sew it, I get a gap there. So I like it to overhang just an eighth of an inch over the bottom of those little notches, just like that. So then once you have it where you want, just tape it down on the bottom, repeat with the other H piece. All right, once you have it where you want it, now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch along the sides and the bottom at an eighth of an inch seam allowance of both of these little card slot sets you're not top stitching over the open edges on the top, obviously, but you are top stitching over those first pockets too. So all the way from the top down, back stitch at the beginning and the end. All right, so this should be your little card slot unit. How cute is that? And like I said, make it scrappy. Make it scrappy. I know it's hard to see it, but I wish I wish I had more materials so that I could show really show off these card slot pockets. So now grab one of your B cuts and lay it right side up so that it's portrait size so the short edges are on the top and the bottom and you're going to grab your little card slot unit and you're going to just line it up right along the bottom edge and once again i don't think you can see the difference at all but this is where it is see so once you have it lined up corner to corner grab some clips and clip this in place so now let's top stitch along the sides and the bottom at an eighth of an inch seam allowance also draw yourself a midpoint mark going right between these two pockets and then top stitch down that. So for that one, I actually like to just draw a line going right down the center, and then I'm going to start on the bottom, sew up to the top, over the raw edge, go over one stitch, and then back down. I love these little pockets. They're so stinking cute. Okay, you can set this to the side for just a moment. So now grab your piece E, and lay it wrong side up, and you're gonna mark a center line going right down the center of the back of piece E. I'm gonna grab some double-sided tape, and I'm just gonna run double-sided tape right over that center line and then remove the paper from the tape. And now take the longer raw edges and fold them back wrong sides together so that the raw edge meets that center line and just add it to the tape. You should be able to see your marked line through the tape, the tape is clear. And then just to make sure it stays in place, I'm also gonna add some clips along the folded edge. So you can see as I'm doing this, I'm really only covering half of that sticky tape since I ran it right over that marked line. So once you have one edge done, turn this around, do the same thing on the other long edge, just wrong sides together to meet the middle. And now let's flip this over and take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch along both of the long folded edges at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you have that top stitched on the right side, the top side here, you're gonna mark three inches in from each short edge and mark a line. So I used a silver ink pen, but I don't know if you can see it but three inches in from the edge and mark a vertical line. So you'll have two of them marked. Now let's move it to the side and grab your main panel here that has all the card slots on it. Okay, try and make sure you guys can see these little marks. So we're gonna mark from the top edge of this one and three quarters of an inch down and draw a horizontal line. So you see that there? And then we're marking two and three quarters of an inch in from the left and make a little cross vertical line and then two and three quarters of an inch from the right, again, a little cross tick. You just need these little marks here. Make sure it's air erasing, silver, something you can wipe down. You don't need these marks left there in the end. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our little strap here and we're gonna line up our vertical marks on our strap with those little ticks. And you'll see they don't line up exactly. That's because we want this to kind of poof out a bit. So what I'm gonna do is take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to make sure the top edge of my strap here lines up with that horizontal top mark that we made right there. That's one and three quarters of an inch down. And first I'm gonna line up the left tick mark on my main panel on that line with that three inch mark that I have on my strap. And I'm gonna top stitch this down, making sure I back stitch at the beginning and the end. Once I have that sewn, I'm gonna lift up my strap so that the other mark on my strap will line up with the tick mark on my main panel 
and I'm gonna top stitch this down. And you can see when you do that, this is gonna puff up on the center here. After those are done, then I'm going to lift up the short edges with the raw edge and top stitch down over the raw edges as well. This will give you these nice little three hills. All right, so now you see how we have these nice little bits here. You can store your cords in there, hang pens from them. I think it's so cool. If you use a silver ink pen like I did, you can grab just like a, a damp cloth and wipe it down. It'll come right off. All right, set this to the side for just a moment. So grab your remaining piece B and lay it wrong side up and then grab your foam and you're gonna just center this over the back of piece B. Okay, and if you need help, you can mark in half of an inch on the corners here to make like little quarter half inch brackets and then just line up your foam with those brackets that might help you just make sure it's centered it doesn't have to be perfect that's the nice thing about this pattern nothing really has to be all that perfect for it to turn out really nice okay so now we're going to take this to the sewing machine with the foam side up if you want to use some spray adhesive to spray this down go ahead and do that uh, or some glue you can do that but we're going to be top stitching from the foam side. So we're going to top stitch first at a quarter inch seam allowance along the foam and then an eighth of an inch seam allowance also along the foam. This is going to compress the sides down so it's easy to work with. You are not going to see this at all. So if you have a bobbin thread that's going to look a little crazy <laughs> on the right side of this, it's fine. This is going to be the inside of the pocket. You're not going to see it. So top stitch around your foam. All right, there we go. So it doesn't have to look pretty even on the right side of the material, it'll be fine. So now take the piece with the foam and lay it foam side up, so wrong side up, and then take your other unit here that has the pockets and lay it right side up so that your two B units are now wrong sides together. Line up all four edges and clip together. Okay, I like to clip all four edges to make sure it's nice and aligned, but we're only going to top stitch on the left edge over here. So with the pockets up and these little loops on the top like this, the left edge is where we're top stitching. Make sure you do it at an eighth of an inch seam allowance and back stitch at the beginning and the end. So if you're doing edge coating on the interior pieces, now is the time to edge coat this edge right here. Go ahead and add all your base and color coats and let those dry before moving on. So now grab your little fold over elastic and on the wrong side, let's mark one inch in from each short edge and then you're gonna fold the raw edge of your elastic wrong side back so that the short edge meets up with that one inch mark. So we're just folding the elastic back by a half of an inch by doing this. So just fold it wrong sides back and add a clip. So now you can flip this right side out and we're gonna top stitch 3 eighths of an inch in from the folded edges on each side of our elastic. Looks like I forgot to turn my camera on for that. I do apologize, but it's just 3 eighths of an inch in so we're just holding the fold down. So flip it back and make sure you caught the short edges and the fold is in place. Now grab your piece A, which is your exterior main panel and lay it wrong side up. And you want the curved edge to be on the left. All right, so you wanna measure 14 and a half inches from this right straight cornered side. So we have the rounded corner and then we have like the sharp corner. So I just measured along the top edge. So 14 and a half inches from this corner over, and then I made a little tick mark right at the top. Same thing on the bottom, 14 and a half inches over from the bottom edge, made a tick mark. Now I'm gonna grab my elastic and I'm gonna take my elastic right side up and line it up so that it's just to the left of that tick mark. So the right side of my elastic meets up with the tick mark over here. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. And you'll notice that your elastic is pretty loosey goosey. And I think this is because if you have, you know, a notebook that needs more space, you have it. However, if you're like, I don't love that, you can always trim down your elastic. You could even just take it and just fold it again like this and top stitch it so that it's a little bit more taut. So think about that now because once you sew it in place, you're done. So if you want this to be more taut, fold it down again, top stitch, and then put this in place. Otherwise, leave it as is and let it be a bit loosey. All right, now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and just top stitch the top and bottom of this elastic in place at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, you can put that to the side for just a moment and then grab your D strap closure piece. And we're not folding this or anything, we're just leaving it as is, but we are gonna top stitch along both long edges of this D strap at a eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now take your exterior main panel and lay it right side up, again, so that the curved edge is on the left and the sharp corners are on the right. And we're gonna measure three and three quarters of an inch along the top edge from each corner in. So once you have your three and three quarter inch tick marks on the top and the bottom, take your little strap and lay it right side up 
so that the right side of the strap matches up with those tick marks and just clip in place. It should be the same width, height, however you wanna look at this as your exterior panel. And now we're just gonna to top stitch over the short ends here to attach it to our main panel at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end. All right, so once you have that on there, you can kind of test this out and see how it's going to look in the end, kind of like this. So if you wanna, again, add any sort of embellishment anywhere, now's the time to really think about that, how this is going to be placed. Let's see, let's straighten that out. So you can have a name here if you'd like, you can add something to the back if you'd like. Think about that now. So before we put all this together, I still need to add my bag tag and I've been trying to decide where to put that. Honestly, I do like it on the inside on this pocket. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little zip pocket here and I'm gonna add my bag tag just like this, centered on there. So I'm just gonna find the midpoint real quick and I'm going to tape this tag down. So now I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and I'm just gonna top stitch along all four edges of my tag at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so now you should have your three units. One with all the card slots, zipper, and the main body. So flip your main body panel so that it's wrong side up. Let's start with the zipper pocket over here. Just line up your zipper pocket so it's right side up, right on this rounded corner here, and then grab some clips and clip it in place. Okay, now that that's clipped in place, let's work on the other side. So make sure you take this side over here and the card slots are on the bottom, the little strap thing is on the top. I already have a bunch of clips holding it together, so I'm just going to add the exterior to this. So again, lining it up corner to corner. Okay, once you have everything clipped into place, we're gonna take this to the sewing machine. We're gonna top stitch along the entire exterior at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You can top stitch it from the front if you'd like. It is bulky under here, and I would suggest moving your zipper into the center, the zipper pull, but you can do it. Just be careful, because I know sometimes we do prefer top stitching to be on the exterior of this. And then once you have top stitch around the entire edge, you're gonna go back and you're gonna top stitch along this top edge of your zipper pocket here and do that at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, making sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end. Alrighty, I know that it's kind of bulky and big. I don't know if you notice at the sewing machine, a lot of times I do kind of fold in part of it while I'm sewing the rest of it. It is easier if you top stitch it with this side up versus the exterior side up. It is more difficult to top stitch it the way I did it. So if you're good with your bobbin thread, top stitch it with this side up, it's gonna be a lot easier. The last thing to do is just go around and if some of your material shifted, that's perfectly fine. If you have like little bits where like the inside is overhanging, just carefully grab some scissors and just trim it down. You want this to look, you know, nice and clean. So I'm just gonna go around just shaving off any little overhangs. And I do this from both sides. So I'll look at the exterior first, trim down any of the interior that's overhanging. And this is especially important if you're going to be edge coating because you do need them to be lined up. And then once you go around the exterior doing that, flip it over and look at the interior and trim off any exterior that's overhanging from this side. You wanna do both sides. Okay, once it's all cleaned up, let's just take a look at this. So I'm gonna flip this in like that, tuck in this little bit over here. Oh yeah, that looks so cute. It's very neutral, very calm. You can easily switch out whatever you want on here. I think this looks so cool. You know what would be cool too is if you embroidered someone's name on here, like if they are going back to school or maybe if they're in college and they just joined a sorority or fraternity, you could put their, you know, Greek symbols on here. That would be really cool. And then they could put like their planner in here or just a notebook for class. I love this. I hope you guys love making this too and have a lot of fun with it. Really, have fun with it. Alrighty, so what did you think? How did you feel about it? What did you think was the most challenging part? Because honestly, I don't feel like any of this is really that challenging. It comes together so nicely. It's so simple. Like I said, perfect, 
beginner pattern. You just started working with cork, with faux leather, with vinyl. This is a great pattern for that. Yes, the exterior piece is a big cut. So a lot of times when we talk about beginner patterns, we, we talk about smaller cuts of material because if it doesn't work out, you don't want to waste a lot of material. However, it is such a big cut, but it's one big cut. So if it doesn't work out, you can still use this big cut in another project, but I don't see how it wouldn't work out. I mean, it's just so cute. And again, if you want to add some firmer interfacing to this, you definitely can. You can add some stabilizer to this. You could add some heat transfer vinyl on the back of it. You could add a lining some places. You could get very creative with this, but to start out, keep it simple. All right, like I told you at the beginning of the video, this is just one of two projects in the July Ochre Root Sally Tomato Mystery Box. The other project, which the video will be coming very soon, uh, if it's the end of July, then this video is not out yet, but it will be out by August 7th. So the August 7th, the other project is this cutie patootie right here. I believe this is called the Dini. I might be saying that wrong, but this is the, this is a small, super great beginner wallet. Now it is a little tricky, but let me just show you. So this is the front of it. I put a bag tag on it. You don't have to. This is the back of it. This is the material that is in. Let me take this clip off. This is the material that's in the bag. It has a little tassel on here on the zipper. We open it up and here is the inside. So it's just a simple mesh pocket. There are two mesh pockets here. This is a very, very simple wallet. There are plenty of wallet designs like this out there. We've done them on the channel before with lots of card slot pockets, change purse, all that. But this zipper technique here can be very tricky. It can be tricky. So I'm gonna walk you through how to do it. This is the perfect pattern if you've been wanting to try something like this to start with, okay? This is very simple. It comes together very easily. The, all of it, I'm just gonna say, you gotta try this one, okay? You gotta try this one. If you've ever been worried about trying a shape like this, like for a typical wallet, try the Dini first. You will get practice from it. It does not have a whole lot of stuff going on, so it's pretty quick. And then jump into the other ones. So stay tuned for this tutorial. So thank you so much for sewing with me today. I hope you love making the Smith as much as I do. I hope you're having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.